Hi, everyone. This is Pino Trovo again from San Francisco State, and this is again the information design class. This is our second project. Uh, we're going to do a bunch of graphs um, on COVID, and I'm going to go through those graphs how to make them in Tableau and Excel, and also show where we get the data sets and also how to create the how to um, format and clean up the data sets. So I am going to um, first open the, um, let's see, the New York Times website, because that's sort of my model for, um, for this assignment in terms of like how they do their graphs. Uh, they're pretty good. There's pretty much lots of them around now, but um, I was curious why they chose to do certain things and not others. So for example, when I went to the website, um, the main coronavirus website on the New York Times, they really focus on cases. And I guess that's a health thing, epidemiological thing, rather than uh, deaths. In other words, the first thing you see is the cases. Okay, um, somewhere here, there's a link to um, their data sets, which are free to the public, as long as we, um, as long as we credit them, okay? I mean, we could probably not credit them, but it would be bad form. So make sure to credit them. Anyway, that link is somewhere here and it would take you to this uh, GitHub repository, okay? And here they have a button that says code and you can just use that and download the entire zip archive, okay? Um, they have live data, which changes throughout the day. And then they have daily counts, which are these down here, okay? And we're gonna be using mainly uh, those. Okay, let me make it big so that, um, let me say a couple of things about this. So the uh, so these are daily counts from basically the beginning, so almost a year, a year ago. Uh, this is the US, uh, this is the, the states, and this is the counties. And these are daily counts where the single cell includes the total count at the end of that day. So in other words, it's cumulative. They have hundreds of people entering data here, working for the New York Times, and they, um, that's how they set it up, okay? So that's the way the file is. Um, the count is one, it's a huge file. It's more than a million rows because it's more than 300 days and about 3000 counties for the United States. So that comes to about a million. <laughs> I found out <laughs> the rough way when I tried to open it, um, but more about that uh, later. So, okay, so I'm, I got my, my data sets from there and from other places too, but that's the main one. So let me, um, I'm gonna go fairly slow because on the one hand, probably some of you like it slower so they don't get lost. Uh, and also I'm not a programmer, I'm not a Tableau expert. So I'm just basically giving you what I know, what I found, okay? Uh, this video should be pretty short anyway. Uh, okay, so let's see. Make this one a little smaller. Um, actually, let me just show you my file uh, sort of structure, okay? And um, and these will be in iLearn. So you'll find them um, in the project uh, section in the attachment, you find these folders. And that's because, let's see if I can show you this. Um, I've made a, um, made a layout guide for the project, okay? And this can be changed. You can rearrange this, well, not any way you want, but um, this is just a, an example. And it's a breakdown of US, US, state, and county. And you could change the state if you have your own state that you wanna maybe live in there now uh, in your own county, um, you could change that. Uh, anyway, I have more details in the assignment page, but um, oh, actually, let me, these were numbered, sorry. Let me, let me show you yeah, the one that has numbers. So I put a number on each one of these examples. And so these videos are key to those numbers. Okay, 
this a, looks a little rough, but, um, and also and I learned the directives will be um, like this. Um, so the first one is the US counts from the beginning till now of the, uh, daily cases. The second one is the California count for cases. The third one is the cases for San Francisco County and the fourth is uh, San Francisco deaths. Uh, the fifth is a map of the US. Um, sixth is a map of California. Uh, seven is a scatter plot of uh, California counties. And the last one is a little heat map that I'll show you now on the website. Um, this is optional. Um, of the maps, you can just do one map. And of these four graphs, you can just you should you can just do three. One and two you have to do, and three and four you can do one or the other. Actually open the bigger one so we can have it handy as a reference. Okay, and actually what I did here is I just took a screenshot of the um, New York Times page and put it there, okay? So what I'm gonna give you is the instructions and the data sets, uh, which ideally you should update to whatever day you decide to use as your cutoff day um, for the data, um, but I won't give you the um, program files. Those you have to make yourself based on the, the instructions, okay? So, um, yeah, so the first one, by the way, Tableau, you probably know already, is interactive in that you can actually save to Tableau public. Um, you have to open an account. And so these things that we see here and that you see also in Tableau, you can make them like that if you want. Um, but for this assignment, I care mostly about the print, okay, the PDF. Um, so let's look at this in detail before we try to do it so that we can describe it and we know what we're looking for. Let's see, let me make sure that I am sharing here. Yeah, yeah, I don't see the, let's see if I use the film. Sorry, just wanna make sure I'm, I don't see the green border anymore, but I'm hoping that it's still recording. Um, so yeah, this is the daily count. So each column is actually um, is actually showing the count for those for that day, right? And this is tells you okay, twelve thousand, eight thousand, and more recently a lot, fifty thousand in a single day in the U.S. Um, so because the, it can change a lot in a single day, the bars are actually better because a line would be very jagged up and down. Um, however, they added this um, seven day average line and we're gonna do that too. So that takes the previous seven days and the next seven days and it makes an average of those days and it just smoothens um, the curve. And for this, it's, it's good to show it as a line. Uh, so it gives a more general sense of how it's going. Um, they also show the percentage change from 14 days before. And yeah, for both cases and deaths. And, um, and this we could do, you don't have to put it in the poster, but we could do this in a calculation in Excel to figure out what is the percentage change from 14 days before. Okay, so this is the first one. And now we're just gonna do this in Tableau. And notice how actually these are gray labels, which I say don't do, but of course on the web it's different because it looks always good and, um, and also less contrast helps. Okay, so I, um, Okay, so we're gonna use, again, the US comma separated value file. And we're gonna open it. So these will be in folder number one, okay? So you can find it and you might have a Excel. Uh, by the way, get Excel because I don't deal with Google Sheets. 
and Excel is free. The whole Microsoft deal is free at school. So just get it, okay? Um, and um, okay, so yeah, so this is the data set the way it was originally. And why did I do this? Oh, yes. Um, so the way you got it, let's see, I'm gonna open it with Excel. Let's take a look at it. And it's pretty straightforward, okay? There is a column for the date. This is nice. Okay, there's a column for the date, starts on uh, January 21st. That was the first case in the United States in uh, Washington state. Uh, then the column for the cases, the column for the deaths, as you can see, zero, zero, zero. And then as it keeps going, uh, again, each number is the cumulative, right? So um, this number, let's see. Yeah, there were 60 cases on this day. So plus from before, I guess that makes, no, that doesn't make it. Okay, hold on a second here. Um, Oh, sorry, no, it doesn't show. I'm sorry, I'm confusing the two things. These two things are cases and deaths. So they are already tabulated, okay? So we'll see in the program that we can do this calculation where we just show the single, the single item. Otherwise in Excel, you could do a calculation yourself. You could do a formula. So for example, if I wanted to know how many cases we had on this day? Well, I could do the math, right? It's 125 minus 104, so it's 21. But here's how you do the formula if you wanted to create a separate column. So you could say, click on this and then type uh, equal. And then you click on this cell and then you say minus this cell. And then you say, okay and it gives you 21. And the nice thing about it is that now I can copy this formula, which shows up here, by the way, copy that. And let's say I wanna paste it here and I get the counts now for each one of these days, okay? So um, I did it in one case later because I definitely needed it to have a separate study column with, this, um, with these numbers. Um, but let's see how we actually do. We do this now. We're going to do this now in Tableau, okay? And also in Excel, actually. In fact, let's see. Yeah, in fact, for this first one, I made it. I made it also in Excel, I believe. So, okay. So I'm going to open. I'm going to close this. So, and the, uh, oh yeah, this is the, okay. So I made also the comma separated value file. I have too many folders now. I don't remember exactly. Um, yeah, this is, this is my file that I recreated by adding Let me check once more here. This is the Excel version. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, okay, so the Excel version, I needed that particular column, so I just, I just, I just took the original and did that formula. Well, let's do the Tableau one. I'm gonna open Tableau. And then what I'll do is I'll do a brand new one so that I make sure I go through the steps, okay? Okay, there was a problem connecting, yes. So what we can do, I'm going to uh, edit the connection information. Yeah, this happens when you move stuff around, right? It, it, it loses the link. So I'm going to now reconnect it. I had reconnected it to the original file from the New York Times and that looks good. So now let's see if, if I, yeah. 
Okay. Actually, I don't need to create a new a new file. I'll just use the same one. So once again, um, what I did was I. And the, there's so many columns. Let's see if I can make this bigger. That um, it's hard to distinguish one from the other. Um, okay. So again, these are cases every day and you can see the dates. Of course, we cannot fit 350 dates and it's just putting the first day. Um, so let me, let me just now replicate this, okay? So what you would do, first of all, is you would go here and you would connect to the data set. So in this case, because it's comma separated value, you would say text file and then you would navigate and you would find it, okay? Now I don't do it because I already have it. So after, uh, take it back now, it should be a simple thing. <laughs> oh, okay, I guess I just clicked the button again. See, you can tell I'm not a Tableau expert. Um, okay, so anyway, we have the data source and when it comes in, looks like that. Okay. And by the way, Tableau is fancy, you know, it puts, it, it recreates, for example, these names are capitalized, even though they're not in the original, but whatever. Um, and so when you do sheet one, it will do a new thing and it will have this, um, it will put, these are the, measures and dimensions so-called and I like to call them categories and variables and you can see it's already um, here specified as a date sometimes you have to tell it um, okay so I'm going to do a new sheet and I'm just going to click on cases right that's the one we want and you can see different colors and then I'm going to click, and this is instead of just doing this basically, right? Instead of dragging and dropping that, you can just click. And then I'm gonna click on dates. So we want the cases for every day and we get this. So now what's happening is that you can see it's just 2020 and 2001. So we wanna make sure that our date is actually a day and not a year. You see, that's a year. So we wanted to say, day and here there's different ways you can say let's see if i say custom yeah if i say custom instead i want days and i want the date value so exactly the date value so that for example if there was a gap you would you know jump um, and there we go so so that's a very nice line but it's not what we want, right? Because, because if you recall, each number is cumulative, right? So it's always gonna go up. Um, so instead what we want is we want those values, which we did with the subtraction in Excel, but we can do it directly in Tableau. So what we'll do now is we'll go into the cases here and we'll say, um, add, a table calculation, okay? So basically it's gonna create a new, a new, a new column, right? A new table. Um, so add table calculation. Oh, and remember we do want, want bars, right? So now by default, it seems that when you do that, the first calculation it does, this must be a standard thing, is so-called difference from, Okay, and that's actually what we want. So let me close this again um, so that we see. So when you go to here, oops, sorry. Cases, not date. Um, and I say add table calculation. Yeah, by default, it just picks the difference from, it just means the difference from the one before in this case, Maybe the cell, I'm not sure if this is actually a menu here. I don't touch it because it's doing exactly what I want. Um, and then it's relative to the previous, right? So it could do the opposite, which would be funny in this case. 
Uh, but anyway, previews is what we want, okay? So there you go, that actually looks already pretty promising. Um, now we need to change it to bars, because you see it's weird, right? It's like, bleh, like a seesaw, right? Um, so we can change to bars here under the marks. Um, we can change to bars there, or um, we can also do here, right click, and then you say mark, okay, let's see. No, actually, that's the way to do it, yeah. So this is good. So here it was automatic, but let's change that to bar, okay? Now, what I did also, I tried to mimic the colors from the New York Times. So why don't we do that? Um, right now, here under color, there are a couple of things. The border is automatic, which means it's putting a border. It's putting a border, you can see it, right, around each bar. We don't want that, it's already crowded enough. So we say none for the border. And then the opacity, well, let's see. Oh, we wanted to change the actual color too. So I, I picked this color and I check it and it's too much maybe. So maybe I'll change the opacity to again, let's see what I did here. Color, yeah. And then you see that it's still, it's still very um, solid, right? Okay, oh, come on. Oh no, that's the actual color, sorry. I made it too light now. It's still too solid, right? So what we can do is actually change the size here. Again, instead of fixed, see if we do manual, and we just make it as small as possible, okay? And I believe this will give us, you know, distinct. Um, so again, no, no border opacity of this particular yellow and the size of the bar is the minimum, okay? That's it, oh, we're almost there. So, um, by the way, again, later, especially for the next project, um, if you want to do an interactive thing, this is really easy because you can just export it to the web, essentially. You just need to register an account with Tableau, and you would do that here. You would go here, and you would have to create an, an account first, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and maybe you would also do first uh, what's called a dashboard, okay, so where you could where you could put your, your things here. So you see, this is now really ugly, but it could be something that you could publish as a, as a dashboard. And I suppose you could design with this. Um, again, I have my issues with a lot of design choices, color choices, et cetera, but so anyway, that will be for later. Um, so now we wanna put that line, right? So here it's a little bit different. Um, than Excel. So what we'll do is we want to put the same data over it and then do another calculation. So those, the way we do an overlay is we take the cases again and we this time we drag it and we drag it until you see that box turns into a, if I did it like this, it would create another side-by-side -side thing, but like this, it will actually put it on top. Um, and again, it's the old curve like we had before. So now we're going to change this to a line because we want the line, right? So it's now a bar. I'm going to change it here in marks to a line. And notice how we changed the one underneath too. So just because we don't wanna get confused, let's change that back to bar, there we go. And now let's work on this line. Um, so here it's a two-step process. We want to do the subtraction, right? So that we get that same up and down line. And then we have to do the average. 
And for some reason in Tableau, I have to do the average first and then the subtraction, but whatever. So let's let's do that. So this is now my second thing, right? That I overlay. So I'm gonna do add table calculation. And the first one, you see, I cannot do, oh, um, all right. If I do different from right now, I cannot do the second, the second calculation. So, but if I do first a moving calculation, you see here, now I can add the secondary one. So in order to do the second one, I have to do the, the moving average first. So, um, and you won't see it until it's done, right? So let's see. So we want a moving calculation and we want the average. So it's gonna be every seven days averaging out. So, so first you choose moving calculation, then you choose, um, sorry, here in the menu, you, you choose uh, average right here. Instead of sum, we want the average which of course is you take seven days, you add them all up and then you divide by seven and you get the average. And I'm just saying that for those who might, you know, whatever. I'm not a statistician, so I always like it when people remind me what an average or a median is, for example, and what's the difference. Okay. Um, so, and then we just here, I just, I tested it earlier. So I'm just gonna say seven days before seven days after and then um, see nothing is happening but now if we do the add the secondary calculation there we go and for some reason it's oh yeah i know why it's not it's not quite where we want it instead of being sort of between the tall and the short bars it's somewhere on top and i'll show you why that is in a second anyway this is what we want so we say okay and the reason is that the scales are different because with the first line, the scale was, um, yeah, it was just different. So what we wanna do now is actually right click on this axis and say synchronize axis. So this will put the axis on the same height as these other axis. So now we're good. Um, somehow the colors got darker for my, all right, maybe when it turned back into a line, the colors got dark again. So let's change that back. That sucks. Um, oh, right, this is where you would change the colors. Like if, if you did that and then you click this, it would change it to pink, but now I'm gonna stick to orange. And I guess yeah, I just want it lighter border none okay that's better and now i want to make the line darker because uh thicker right so let's see if i can select it no it's hard to select okay um so it's a line of course so the size is simply the thickness right and i picked red because again i tried to match the new york times um, I can see that it has a border because it's creating a little halo around it. I don't like it. So I'm gonna go back to color. Uh, that's maybe a default thing because it doesn't look like I can change it. Um, oh no, yeah, it's just in the interface. Okay, now it's, it's gone. Uh, it is a little bit um, overlaying. I don't like that either. So I'm gonna say totally solid. Um, and by the way, this is actually pretty nice. The types of lines, um, this was in here. there was a point where I could pick the different type of, oh yeah, the path right here. You could actually change this line instead of being a smooth curve like this. You could do a stepped line, which only changes when it actually changes, otherwise it stays flat. So that's, you can't quite see much of it um, or these kind of little dashes. Anyway, this could be used another time, um, but that's it. Now I think, 
I got what I want, right? Uh, of course, the labels and all the things should be straight, but other than that, um, this is done now, right? So yeah, so the cases have gone down and this was the peak. So this was 260,000, 300,000 on January 8th. Um, okay, so we want to save this. So what I do is I print and, um, okay, I don't have a big printer at home. So I, well, actually let's just make it smaller. You can create a, a local host printer, which allows you to basically create a virtual PDF printer. Um, anyway, save as PDF. And I do save as Adobe PDF because it's, it usually makes sure everything is, is good. So I'm gonna, oh, I don't know where it's going, but maybe it will ask me. Yeah, okay. So I'm going to, um, Put it in this folder under maybe old um, save. And now real quick, what I'll do is I'll open it in Illustrator to show. Oh, actually it opened it in PDF. Okay, good. It's all in one page, but you can see the format is weird, right? I probably could have a plot update. Um, let's see if I can change the page setup here. Oh yeah, cool. In Tableau, I can actually do that. Um, but let's just say landscape. That will help. So print, I'm printing it and I'm going to um, save as Adobe PDF, print, output PDation, uh, launch nothing. And I want to say press quality. I want the best quality, right? I mean, they're all vectors, but you never know. Okay, save, replace. And let me just open it real quick. And I'm going to open it in Illustrator, okay? And I hope now that it opens the right page. Sometimes I have problems. Um, by the way, um, this box I don't like. In box P import PDF pages as links for optimal performance. Yeah, but what happens is then the links get broken and you're screwed, okay? So again, I'm not an expert in this either, but um, I would say just bring it in and have it there. <laughs> okay. Okay, now I don't have these fonts for some reason. Uh, so I'm just say find fonts and I'm just gonna change everything to whatever, to some kind of default, change all. And it's gonna be Myriad, which is pretty good because it's censored. Okay. So the first thing you wanna do in Illustrator is select all and under object, compound, clipping mask, release. See, that allows me to see everything. And also I use this view, which is uh, view preview, so that I can really edit out stuff that I don't need, right? Um, and there you go. Each one of these is a box. And it doesn't look like they're actually perfectly spaced. Yeah, not at all, does it? There is some kind of, um, and that's probably a, a rendering issue, right? So I think if we, um, yeah. Well, let's see, this is an interesting thing. I'm, I'm gonna quickly do, I'm gonna quickly try to do a trick here. Now I have to lock some things, otherwise um, I'm gonna try to space these guys. So that I fix this problem. I mean, I'm, I'm really being nitpicky here, but why not? Um, right now I 
just have to deselect the line. So it looks like I selected all the rectangles. And now what I'm gonna do is actually, um, what is the line somewhere here? Oh, there it was. So I'm actually going to distribute them. Oh, look at that. Okay, so that's a quick, <laughs> um, yeah, that's a quick thing to show, I mean, to show how it could be done, right? So don't get panicked if you're like, oh my gosh, you know, they're like lumped together at three. Um, now, oops, this is pretty good. Now you see because of the opacity, it's got these lines. Remember what we, what we did about the lines? Let's see, object. In this case, I'll leave it alone because it's already a pretty complicated graph, but um, actually let's quickly look at the New York Times. Let's see what they do. I always ask what would New York Times do? Not much, yeah, they do the same thing. They have a, they have a, a gray line behind. Okay, so that's good. So we shouldn't do too much here. Um, but you can see because of the resolution of the screen, they prefer to make a pretty, pretty rough line. Um, all right, so yeah, again, anyway, I, you know about this for the print, definitely make this black, right? So whatever this is, um, the color right there, the fill color, just make it black. Of course, now I have done that. Okay. You know what I mean, okay? And just make the labels black. Um, and, yeah, and then these labels, I would say definitely, you know, don't leave them up there. Put them next to the, uh, you know, you see how the New York Times did it. They put a little, a little thing there, right? That that points out to just one, just one bar that says, okay, this is the new case, and then it points to the line, and then it says this is the, this is the average. All right. Now. Actually, a further trick here would be to use to use the um, there's all kinds of layers here. See that there's just like so many layers that we don't need. Uh, what we could do if you wanted to actually put a little more space here, I would give it a little border. So in this case, it would be a hack. Right, so here is no border, but instead let's make the border white. Of course, now everything disappears because this border is canceling everything. Um, but we could do it. Uh, where is the border? Yeah, it's here, one point, and we can make it really small. Ah, nice. Okay, so that's a hack. I made a border so that it looks like there's space between the bars, but it's really. You know, it's really a, a fake thing. And I wonder if the opacity of this could be changed too, probably. Um, anyway, I'll let you play with this because you guys are better at this stuff than me. Okay, that's your first graph. And so for, for next, for in a week from Friday, um, it's just making this. And it took me now probably more than half an hour to go through the process, but you can see that in well, it's actually not that bad. Um, right. Okay, so I'm gonna save this <clears throat> and I would save the illustrator. And by the way, when you save or the illustrator or export it, always save it as PDF or um, if you don't do anything to it, EPS is the best, but then you can only scale it or save it as, yeah, um, PDF. Okay. So this is number one, and we're gonna do number two in a moment.